Most of us don't come to yoga and meditation because our lives are going exceptionally well. We're often brought to the mat because of a sudden crisis. And while this isn't universally true, I've found that it's a rare person who comes to yoga when life is at its best. My crisis came when I was a college student, facing the sudden onset of anxiety. These panic attacks would arise at unpredictable moments, leaving me with the feeling that I would faint, throw up, or both. Eventually, I wanted to leave my apartment less and less, afraid that one of these attacks would happen in public and I would have nowhere safe to care for myself. Finally, out of desperation, I called my mom. I knew I didn't want to go see a doctor because I was afraid they would simply prescribe a medication that would dampen the symptoms but not address the cause. My father had been on anti-anxiety medication for more than 40 years without any transformation to his suffering. And the truth is, I was afraid of falling into the same fate. I want to be clear here before we continue that there is a time and a place for medicalized support. And in no way am I advocating that you come off any current medications, and in no way am I saying that the use of medication to support your highest health and healing is a negative thing. In fact, I think it is sometimes the bravest thing a person can do. During that call to my mom, I explained why I was hesitant to see a doctor, because although I couldn't name it, a part of me was aware that the anxiety was a symptom of something within me that was asking to be seen. We came up with a plan. Go to acupuncture, start meditating again, and begin going to yoga. I had never been an athlete. I was the kind of person who balls hit in the face. Growing up, I was small and afraid of discomfort. I lacked a growth mindset and I was completely disconnected from nature and my body. Looking back, this disconnect was likely the main source of my anxiety. I had spent so much time numbing and avoiding what I was feeling with school, work, substance abuse, and socializing, and it was finally catching up with me. The idea of going to a yoga class literally terrified me. I imagined it would be like a dance class and I would be the idiot in the corner who knew none of the steps and was holding everyone back, making a fool of myself. But I showed up anyway. When I arrived at that first class, I unrolled my brand new sticky mat and it made this horrible sound that filled the room, literally announcing me as a newcomer. I cowered in the corner waiting for class to begin, making myself as small as possible. The class was the perfect mixture of strength and spirit. I felt challenged and supported, overwhelmed and yet fully accepted. I watched in awe as people from all walks of life navigated poses such as chaturanga with grace as I collapsed to the floor in a sweaty heap. When the class finally came to an end, Shavasana was bliss. I felt light and finally free. But yoga was not love at first sight for me. And I kept going back. Even if I went weeks or months without attending a class, something inside of me eventually drew me back to my mat. My anxiety dissipated and my life began to change drastically. How I spoke to myself, how I wanted to spend my time, how I wanted to eat and nourish my body, what was important to me in my relationships, the work I wanted to do, and my values all began to shift and they initiated key questions that forever altered the course of my life. I created this program because maybe the worst of your crisis has passed. Maybe you've fallen in love with yoga and now you're wondering, why is this practice so dramatically changing my life? What is it about yoga that is so powerful? How is it that a seemingly simple practice can be having such an important impact on your soul? Over these next 30 days, we'll venture to answer some of these questions. 
talking about the aspects of yoga practice, yoga philosophy, research, and science that demonstrate why yoga is so powerful. This program is simply an offering, a consolidation of the practices, teachings, and tools that forever transformed my life. And my greatest hope is that by sharing them with you, you too experience the power to live. Since that first fateful yoga class more than 20 years ago, I've gone on to become an experienced registered yoga teacher and teacher trainer, leading hundreds of trainings and retreats all over the world in power yoga, yin yoga, restorative yoga, and meditation. I'm a certified mindfulness meditation facilitator, the co-founder and co-CEO of Inner Dimension TV, an author, and have studied somatic trauma therapy, holistic health, mindfulness-based practices for internal and external racism, and relational mindfulness. While I've never had a debilitating anxiety attack again, it doesn't mean I don't experience anxiety. Yoga and meditation simply taught me how to have a relationship with this part of myself. And through that awareness, acceptance, and compassion, I learned to tolerate the sensations and feelings rather than run away from them. Over these four weeks together, we'll learn how to skillfully turn toward rather than away from these powerful moments.